Dragon Riders, Kaze no Keru, by Night Dragon Zero. Chris's perspective. Time no longer had any meaning to me. I lost track of just how long I spent in that cage, hidden on a Team Rocket boat, bound for a place I could only think of as my future prison. I was kept tied up and restrained the whole time. The stiffness in my muscles was absolutely killing me. At least they didn't starve me, with some guy throwing in a piece of meat every now and then. The boat was apparently making rounds, picking up various agents and Pokemon, before heading back to one of the Team Rocket bases. I knew we'd arrive when the boat stopped moving for a long time, and the sounds of men shouting and machine grinding could be heard. Finally came my turn. Three rockets approached my cage, two dim-witted underlings and one bearded man who looked like the standard army commander everyone hated. All three of them were armed with long shafts, probably electrical shock sticks. They said this one was real nasty, one of them told the bearded men. Well, let's see then. He made the mistake of pulling off my muzzle, after which I promptly sank my fangs into his hand. OW! Damn it! I was immediately jabbed by the shock sticks, sending a piercing pain shooting up to my brain, preventing me from doing anything else. We told you so. Ugh, shut up, wise guy, and help me. Holding me firmly, they strapped the muzzle back on and dragged me off. My arms were still bound behind my back, and so were my wings, but my legs were free, and I kicked about wildly as they attempted to restrain me. I could see that the boat had docked at a hidden pier, some distance into a cave. Unfortunately, Team Rocket had many bases like this, so it was impossible to tell where I was. Damn thing! Stay still! The bearded man cursed. It's a scyther, what do you expect? One of the others said. There's a reason why these are hard to catch. And where are those idiots with the tranquilizers? As I kicked about, I unintentionally hit a lever. It so happened to be the release for a crane that was lifting several crates out on the boat. The crates fell, hitting the underground dock and shattering, sending several men running for their lives. The bearded man smacked me several times, so hard that I hit the floor in pain. Think you're a wise guy now, do ya? He snarled. Sarge, it's a girl by the way, one of his companions commented. How would you know? The sergeant asked. Because, unlike you, I actually went to school. I also heard that female Scyther tend to be a lot more rebellious. Really? Now that's interesting. We'll see how tough she really is once I'm done with her. The Sarge grabbed me by the muzzle and pulled my head up so he could stare directly into my eyes. I am your master now, Sorgia. He jabbed the electrical stick against my chest, shocking me into submission. Jade's perspective. My prey lay before me, screaming as it should be crying out in fear, knowing death was near. I was ready, poised to make the kill. And yet, why did I hesitate? His words, they meant nothing to me? Or did they? Did I know them somehow? No. I knew no one. I fought and battled alone. I followed my instincts. But why? Why did they seem to tell me that something was not right? It seemed I'd hesitated for too long. Another one appeared, a Dragonair, a far more formidable opponent than this squirming creature beneath me, another to violate my territory. She was saying something, words, unfamiliar, voices, from my shadow memory? No, a trick, a trick to catch me off guard. I smelt the scent of other Pokemon around her, and humans, like the fallen one before me. They would soon be coming for their comrades, I could feel it. There was not much space to maneuver, it was wet and raining. This battle would not be won to my advantage. Sometimes, survival of a warrior depends on knowing when to flee and live to fight another day. I roared, letting loose the flames from my jaws. The Dragonair took the blast head on. I let go of the human and charged, slamming her into a wall. At the cave's entrance, I spread my wings and flew. I shot a glance back and was pleased to find the Dragonair laying stunned. They would not be following me. The rains were harsh and the winds were strong. However, I would not be deterred. The call of my brothers led towards the west. That was where I would go, to begin my life again. Chris's Perspective I awoke lying in a dark room. Blinking, I stumbled to my feet, eyes adjusting to the darkness. I was somewhat relieved that the ropes and straps around my body were gone. I was momentarily startled to see another scyther in front of me. I realized it was just my reflection, as the entire room was lined with mirrors. The mirror room? That means... 
Oh no. I knew this was one of the training rooms. The mirrors were specifically configured so that our masters on the other side could see us, whereas the Pokemon saw only the reflections. Ready, Sorgia? The Sarge's disembodied voice boomed. Let's see how good you really are. All of a sudden, a spinning disc came flying. It smacked me directly in the chest, knocking me over. So, it is the discs, I thought grimly. Back when I worked for Team Rocket, I trained Pokemon using this facility too. Ironically, now it was my turn to face the trials. Even so, being fired at the speed they were, the disc could easily injure or kill a weak Pokemon. Not that Team Rocket cared anyway. Another disc and another came flying towards me. I sliced all up with relative ease. Not bad at all, the Rocket's voice muttered. Perhaps you do have quite some talent after all. Now, let's try level two, shall we? <laughs> this time, discs came from not only the front, but behind as well. Then they were coming from the sides, two and three at a time. After which came the spikes and electrical spots on the floor, sticks protruding from the wall and such. By the time he finished level 10, the highest one, I was drenched in sweat, bruised in too many places to count, and utterly exhausted. I collapsed, not willing to do anything else. I heard several footsteps approaching me. Amongst them were the same man from before, my so-called master, and he was clapping. Not bad, not bad at all, he muttered. You actually beat the old record. No one's ever come close except for that ride-on that had the heart attack when he had one point to go. The rocket turned towards one of his companions. What was that Pokemon with the record again? Remember that Charmeleon that nobody could tame? That was him. Firestorm, I realized. I actually beat Firestorm's record. If there was one good thing that had happened to me recently, then this was it. As he approached me, I growled, pulling my head away. Hmm, she's still got some fight left. Two wire loops were tossed around my neck and tightened, choking me. Three men held me down as my master stepped over my body and fixed a collar around my neck. I felt a great sense of dread hearing the metallic click of the lock, knowing exactly what the collar was for. I struggled, but then my master pushed a square device in his hand. Instantly, a series of electric shocks coursed through my body. All the other rockets let go and backed away as I rolled over, screaming in pain. That's what'll happen if you don't do everything I tell you to. He laughed evilly. He shut off the device, leaving me lying on the floor on my stomach, throbbing in pain. You'll address me only as master, understand? He gave me another shock for good measure, on his part. Other than that, obey, and you'll be just fine. He knelt down and stroked the back of my head. As much as I wanted to resist his vile touch, my body had shut down. I could barely even move in my current state of exhaustion. All I could do was stare up into the face of my tormentor. Welcome to Team Rocket, Sorgia, he laughed. Again, I added in silently. I was dragged off and thrown into a prison cell for the briefest rest. It was unlikely that Team Rocket had built these specifically for their Pokemon, but it seemed like this was an abandoned prison that they'd taken over, and making use of the existing facilities was common sense. The cell certainly looked like it had housed human convicts before. All sorts of foul scents came from it, and I really didn't want to know what they were. It wasn't very large, designed for two prisoners at most. The wooden boards that hung from the wall served as beds, with some dirty pieces of cloth still left behind. A hole at the side served as a crude toilet. The steel door had one barred opening near the top that allowed the wardens to check on the prisoners. The opening was the only source of light in the cell. The thought had just hit my mind when the opening was slammed shut, plunging me into complete darkness. Depressed, I lay down on the wooden bed and closed my eyes. Night Slice's Perspective Legendary Dragon? I asked. You sound so confused, my friend, Kyoi laughed. You, of all beings, should know just who we are. I feel... I closed my eyes. Kaiser's power within you. Some of my own as well. You need me to recite the whole paragraph? Paragraph? All right then. We, the legendary dragons, were created by the two dragon gods, Harasalt and Kaiser, to serve as their generals. After the war ended, we who survived cast aside our former alliances and bonded together as a single unit. After making sure the damage we caused was righted to the best of our abilities, we sent ourselves to a form of slumber in which we would only awaken when light and dark clashed again. Since that time, we have vowed not to interfere directly with the matters of the world. 
However, as repentance to the suffering we caused during the wars, they would lend indirect aid to those we deemed noble, worthy, and in need. The tale of our origins, however, cannot be disclosed to any being other than a descendant of our former masters. Okay, I understand, I nodded. His grip seemed to have loosened a little, allowing me some breathing space. You really do? Kyoe suddenly asked, looking down at me. Yes, why? Ha! I actually got it right! He grinned, showing off his intimidating fangs. I'm not as stupid as this we constantly says I am after all. I glanced over to Hazuki, and the Pokemon mouth, Stay there! You know, with whoever that is, I agree. I lowered my body by bending my knees slightly and grasped his right hand with mine. This involved my thumb being over his. Then, all at once, I slid to the side, lifted his hand off my body, and spun to his side. The technique didn't stop there, as I brought him to the ground as well. The humanoid dragon looked honestly shocked as his face hit the ground. Still holding his hands in the lock position, I twisted his wrist, causing him to cry out in pain. While you were talking, I was taking note of your body structure, and realizing it's practically the same as a human's, especially at your arm joints. I figured a few of Chris's Aikido techniques would work pretty well. Yeah, he snarled, attempting to push himself up. You don't want to do that, I taunted, twisting his wrist further, unless you want me to dislocate your wrist right here. Chris had taught me some techniques, but I was certainly no expert at them. I had positioned myself a little too close to his body, so he was able to swipe at me with his tail. I took the blow, but managed to roll away and get onto my knees. Kyoe came at me with a downward chop. Still on my knees, I slid to the side and got my hand at his elbow joint. I spun and pulled, pulling him down to the floor again. Whoops, you missed, I laughed, getting to my feet. This time, Kyoe came at me with a punch instead. Once again, I slid to the ground and grabbed his wrist. I pulled and threw him over my hip. Missed again! Kyoe was really angry now. I saw him opening his mouth and preparing to fire. Oh, shit! I ran as the dragon fired off a series of fin missiles. Damn! What I wouldn't give to have my agility technique right now, I thought. That was when I realized how fast I was sprinting. I was far ahead of where Kyoe was firing. Maybe... Maybe I still have some of my old power after all. I got behind him and jump kicked the back of his head, causing him to hit the ground again. I'm still faster and stronger than any ordinary human, but still not a match to him. So how can I use these factors to defeat a physically more powerful opponent? I was busy evading his rock throws when an idea suddenly snapped into my head. I retreated until my back was against a huge, thick tree. Come on! I taunted, pulling my eyelid down and sticking out my tongue. Try to use your head for something it was built for! Kyoe reacted exactly as I wanted him to. The berserk dragon lowered his head and charged. I calmly stood my ground with my arms folded and waited. Watch out! Hazuki cried. I faced my opponent and suddenly dropped down very quickly, folding my knees. Kyoe's chest hit my face, shoving me back against the tree, giving me a hard knock on the back of my head. However, the important thing was that Kyoe's head and neck went straight through the tree and out the other side. And taking into consideration the dragon's strength, it was no wonder the tree was literally ripped out of the ground. But it didn't stop there. The force of his motion carried him onwards to smash several other nearby trees as well. So, it ended up with Kiyoe pinned down at the bottom of a huge pile of trees. His head was still stuck through the bottom tree, and the dragon was struggling to free it. Unfortunately, he was wedged in tight, just like in the cartoons.